Prescott. Hi, I'm Chip Hamlin. And I'm Merle Prescott. And this is Tackle, Tackle Talk, Talk with, with Chip and Earl. Earl. Earl, I feel like you changed it on me. No, I wait for the music yeah. every time. I feel like the you changed still it up playing. on. Andy, can we can we shorten that? How many times that? have I told you to stop? Andy, can we just shorten that? I think it's a little bit too long. Anyways, forget all that. We're back here in New York doing some fishing after a good day of hunting. Got some bear steaks back in the van. We got to cook them up at some point. Uh, but I guess I should ask, how are you doing today, Earl? Chip? That's the end. That's it. Oh. Huh. Okay. Oh, I'm all right. Man, a few words. You know what, Chip? Tell it to me, Earl. There was a couple more money dollars in the bank. I'd be feeling a little bit more comfortable. Earl, you know what? I hate to keep bringing up the money aspect I think, of it, Chip. I think it's time that we play a little, have a play a little exercise, though. Because you're thinking, you're thinking glass half empty instead of half, half full. full. And I think we should play a little game called, let's think half of full. all the things we could do with $15. I can buy 30 of those spinning greasy hot dogs in the gas station with $15. You think that would be a good use of the money? I kind of think it would. You can freeze them. We'd have lunch for a, for a month, probably. I'm still trying to think of something I could buy for $15, Chip. Well, I can think of some other gas station items. I get I'm those. They can be on gas station, though. Well, that's pretty much where I shop. Oh. For Christmas last year, you got me that. Was that from a gas station? My apron that says, I hate Mondays. That was from the gas station. They had a special. Retlaw says that with $15, you can get three cheap hookers. A fishing joke. I, I love it. I bet I could get four. A, fi a fishing yeah. joke, I get. He's talking about fishing hooks. The little hooks, yeah. Yeah. Right? Cheap ones. The more expensive ones, yeah, they can yeah. go for a little bit more. Those are good. That's a good, that's a good joke there. I like all the fishing jokes. Yeah. I could buy 15 candy bars from the gas station. Well, that's true if they were only a dollar a piece, though, Chip. But I've seen. You can't get the Snickers. Those, dollar, those cost quite a lot. dollar seventy-five. We might for we a probably bag get fun size, and I think they have fun size, six or though. seven M and M's in the bag. They mostly fill them with air these days. Eh? What's, what's that? When I was a, let me tell you something, Chip. When I was a young man, probably around the early '80s, late '80s, early '70s, late '70s, they had fun. Fun size was a lot more fun. I used to see a candy bar when I used to go trick or treat, and I used to dress up like R two C three Po. And there was like a, I was a, um, a robot and the, the lady down the street, Mrs. Rydabin, she used to give me the biggest candy bars I've ever seen. And sometimes she'd invite me inside of her house and I'd go inside. But those candy bars were so big. Great. And more fun than today's fun size candy bars, which I feel like aren't that fun because they're much smaller. In fact, when things are bigger, I have more fun with them. That's what she said. Oh, that was was that? Who was that? Is that, that was Andy? A, no, that wasn't. That wasn't Andy. That was one of our callers. Oh, well, they just uh, snuck that one in there. Oh, uh, Chip, that was a good. Snuck it in that there. That was a good sneak. That reminds me. Uh, when I was a kid, um, I spent a lot of time talking to strangers. One time, uh, there was a stranger in a car. It was, it was more of a van, and he uh, he started talking to me about candy, and uh, I like candy a lot. He was talking about um, Kit Kat bars and the Three Musketeers. You know the Three Musketeers? Yeah, give me a break. Give me a break. That's a Kit Kat. Break me off a piece I'm of a that. I'm a step behind, but Kit I'm catching Kat up. Kit Kat bar. You like that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, what would you do for a Kit Kat bar? Oh, that's the Klondike, Cyril. Sometimes I think you don't know your candies very well. Chip, I'm just a Butterfinger guy. It gets stuck in your teeth, though, you know? But that Bart Simpson character, yeah, he, he likes those Butterfingers, that's for sure. 
Anyways, the guy in the van started talking to me about the candies, and he said, Hey there, sir. If you, uh, if you like candy, you should come in my van. I got a whole selection of candies. And so that, I, I went in the van. And that was how we met. Yeah. It's a good friend of mine. I called him Lester. Never learned his real name. He took me back to his home and showed me his, uh... He had a bunch of filming equipment. Uh, seemed like a collection. He'd turn it on occasionally, and uh, I did some dances. Did huh? you ever get the the bars? The bars that you wanted? The candy bars that that you wanted? Or did you get a different kind he, of bar? He, he, he made me do things for him, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, dances. And that was the end of the story, though. That was really the end of the story. There's not much more to the story than that. Is it phone lines? Is there anyone on the phone lines? I'm well, what kind of I, van was it? It's one of those white ones. The Well, the, kind of like the one we have now. The tinted windows. Ours is tinted. Our windows are tinted? I had them tinted last week. It was called Sunshine Tints. They only They only did it for 30 bucks. That's two donations. Oh, we got a fish on her. Oh, finally. Here yep. we go. I'm gonna get us I'm gonna get us some dinner. Maybe it'll be a fun sized fish. Maybe. Yes. That was a good joke. Nope, entropy, huh? uh, the the hot dogs are all at the gas station. Um, he never bought me those. We we probably should tell people that. We're on the internet. And uh, we're taking donations, so keep Tackle Talk alive. Keep Tackle Talk alive. Do you want to check the phones there? We can hashtag it later. Hash browns. Chip, we have a call from a guy named Everett, Everett. Smith. He's got a bit of a question here. Andy, why don't you patch him through? Andy, why don't you patch him through? Andy? Let me tell you something. Andy, this guy with the computers, he doesn't... Sometimes he tells me he knows ev what all the letters on him do, but... Keyboard? Sometimes I'm not quite sure about him. Okay. Hi, Chip and Earl. Uh, I had a bit of a question for you. Uh, Go ahead. So, uh, whenever I get together with uh, my in-laws, uh, it's a little awkward. Uh, not because I, I dislike them, but it's like... Um, uh, my my mother-in-law, when, whenever I see her, she uh, you know she uh, she gives me like a little kiss, and uh, yeah, no, it's it's no, it's 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 uh, like on the lips, and uh, it's it's uh, how do I say this? Uh, passionate. Yeah, it's it's really passionate. Passionate lip kiss. And uh, I I I think my uh, my mother-in-law might uh, might be in love with me, uh, which is really awkward because I'm uh. Married to her, uh, her daughter. Uh, the 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 weirdest thing is uh, though. Uh, I, I think I I think I might be in love with her back. Oh, uh, okay. Um. Uh, how, how do I approach approach the situation? Uh, I'm in a bit of a, a problem here. Let let me know. Thanks, guys. Well, uh, thanks for the call, Everett. Uh, sounds like if I heard him right, he's married, but uh, he's in love with his mother-in-law, who's also in love with him. What do you think about that one, Earl? Uh, well, some passionate lip kissing. Well, I'm Chip. getting a little bit excited just thinking about that. Well, Chip, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. Um, at family functions, grandmothers and mothers say like a little peck on the cheek. Oh, yeah. That's There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. He just a little hand peck. alongside, just a little click, quick little click there. Can you do that again? No. But... When, it's like that. When um, a woman, an older woman, I believe they call them cougars now, get a little bit too passionate, it could be that she's unhappy with her marriage. And this w woman might be interested in making um, a whoopee with you. I would resist temptations, even though it says that you are interested in her. But the Bible says, covet thy neighbor's wife. 
So I would just say, stick with your wife. Oh, it says don't, don't covet. What's covet? It, 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 it means like... Chip, don't interrupt my story. You don't know the Bible as well as I do. I've read it three times. I don't know about that one. Top to bottom. Okay, okay. Even like I all skip, the copyright information the, uh, on the second page. Old Testament, I skip it. The what? Just go ahead. So what I would do is start looking at neighbors. See if they're attractive. If they are, don't even worry about it. And don't. I wouldn't tell your wife that her mother is interested in you because that's just going to open up a fair more about a bit more confu um, confusion with her. So my suggestion is if you can, and, and you know, just be really very secretive about it, you know, don't kiss her back if she's doing making a passionate kiss to you. Maybe push her, not hard, not, not, I'm not saying like shove her across the room, but definitely be forceful about it. If she does it, if she starts kissing you too passionately, you can always try biting her, her mouth. I grab her on the booby. Chip, that's the that's the op that's. Some women consider that a, a turn on, and sometimes the cougars are in heat. Women find that kind of action pleasurable, and that's the the wrong sign that you want to send. You want to send a sign that says, I'm not interested. So so then she'll want a more. It's the hard to get thing, right? Exactly. So you're going to want to downgrade your outfits. If, you, if there's a local homeless shelter nearby, buy some clothes from there, something with holes in it. If there's a local homeless man you know, maybe try taking his clothes while he's sleeping. Make sure they're, they smell very bad. That way she won't be attracted to you. And never, ever wear chapstick because then your lips will be all dry and cracked. And when she kisses you, she'll say, oof. Now, Earl, no, I'm, I'm not sure that's right. Now, uh, from what I know about cougars, uh, when they're in heat, they like strong scents. They, they got good noses, so they can pick up scents from a mile away. And when the women turn into the cougars when they're in heat, um, that might just uh, lead to more, uh, what you get, whoopee time, you called it. Chip, I don't think you know anything about the Bible. Three times, back to front. How many times can you say you know it? That's right, zero. You probably don't even know about the Jonah whale. There was fishing in the Bible? Yes. Jesus was a fisherman. He was a fisher of men. Jonah was a whale. Jonah was the whale? Jo the whale was named Jonah. Oh. After he killed Why'd Ahab. Why'd they name a whale? Ahab named him. I don't know. I don't name fish. I don't think it's right. Some people do. Like those little betas in like the little cages. They're cheap, though. You can get those really cheap. Anyways, I think the important question is, is um, how attractive is the stepmother? You only got one life to live? I think that's something Jesus said. He said, uh, you only live once. You know what he said? He said YOLO. Yeah, that was Jesus. That's in the Bible. And, uh... There's only so many times you can get an older woman who's uh, in heat after you and wants to do the um, the sweaty dance with you. The what? The sweaty dance? The sweaty dance. The slip and slide. Oh, so don't blow in it. Intercourse. Wait, are you suggesting that he goes through with it? Well, yeah. What about Actually. His well, no. See, I think you're exactly wrong. I'm well, sometimes I wonder about your views on marriage. You don't want to keep secrets. So what you should say is, Honey, your mother, whom you love very much, loves me very much, and I love her very much too, and we should all love each other very much together and at the same time. How does... With the whoopee. There's not enough holes. Well, there's enough holes. It's the... Uh, the fillers, the candy bars, right? Like Lester. I imagine there's a bit of turn taking. But then there's somebody left out. On the sidelines, you could say. I mean, 
Were you on the sidelines when, when you and Denise were together? <clears throat> no donations still uh, after still, the one. Um, well, just the one. Fifteen percent to the gold. That's um, better than one in seven, though. Well, I got a personal question for you. Sure. This uh, goes back to the Bible. Uh, what's um, what do you call it when you uh, do the whoopee with yourself? What is that? Uh, is it called the um? I've heard some different Self terms sex. for it. It's um, heard uh, choking the chicken, roughing up the suspect. You know, polishing the baseball bat. Anyways, this uh, is a variety of names for it. I masturbation. Think yeah, that's the word. Is that um? Did Jesus say that? that way? I mean, when he said you only live one. I mean, is that is that like it? Is that all right? Redlaw had a good one. Flogging the dolphin. <laughs> it's a fishing one. I like it. Another fishing joke there. Chip. I just want to share a story with you really quick. Slapping the cod. Me and my friend, uh, Ryan, we always had an idea. This goes back to my first job. Uh, we always wanted to open up a fishing store called Master Bait and Tackle. <laughs> That's a good name. But then we realized that it has a double meaning, Master Bait and Tackle. And I was thinking that once people are done buying their master bait, they might be interested in tackling someone, like an old lady or whoever might be nearby. So we decided to change the name. You definitely want to go, it's the, it's the wrong way around. You want to tackle and then master bait. You pin them down and then you do... No, no, no. You don't want to do it no, the no, other the, way. No, the bait, the bait you use for fishing. You'll be all messy. The, the master, master crafted bait. Bait and tackle, but they're both in the master category of. What are you saying? You're reading too far into this. I don't think I need to remind you of you the Bible. Pin them Maybe down I do. First, and then I'm confused. But anyways, ship. Sometime I, sometime I worry about you. It seems like your head's screwed on, right? Earl, any more donations? I like fishing. And I'm really glad we're out here fishing today. I'm really happy to be sharing the day with you out here fishing with our, our callers. And uh, it's a really great time. There could only be one way to make this better, though. The money. More right? money. The more money. The money. It's okay. Chip, we're, uh, Chip, there's a... We got lunch and dinner. Well, grizzly bear steaks. Well, we, yeah, we don't have quite half dinner yet. Uh, this lunch. Well, we got an update. Yeah. Retlaw has and an update to the uh, the reptile, the lizard people, who have taken over as town council. In our previous episode, yeah. Right, yeah, right. go ahead and fill us, fill them in. Um, oh, I don't remember it, though. Well, they were reptiles. Okay. They were cold-blooded. Chip Hamlin had the great idea to boil them in acid. No, no, I said just put them in a warm room. In the milk. Should we patch them through? Yeah, absolutely. He's already patched through. He R can Retlaw, if you want he to can patch uh, any time. Go ahead. Come on. Okay. So I think we got the cue there. I think that was Andy. Caller, you here? We we need an update. All right. Let's give it a second. Technical problems. Gentlemen, hear me? Oh, yeah. We, we can hear you. here. Go ahead. Uh, so the good news is the flamethrower worked very well. The flamethrower. See, the I thought it would. That's, that's a good idea. Worked. Yep. I'm the great. bad news is they weren't reptilians, just Democrats. Oh, they really, uh, oh. they really ripped that. So oh. I'm gonna need a lawyer. Well, uh, uh, so you lit a bunch of people, left wing be the people on fire. They're people, right? Is that what he? Well, did? I wasn't expecting them to be people. You weren't expecting the people. Well, turns out they were people. They were they're people. Well, I mean, was there anyone who survived that that knows that you did it? Well, I mean, I don't know. Just one woman was screaming a lot, and I kind of shot them. But I don't know if anybody's alive. This is uh, we're um, live on the um, what do you call the internet? Uh, well, Chip, there's a 
There's always ways to silence people. Well, you know more about this than me. With threats and violence? No, just making sure they don't say anything. Stuffing something in their mouth. Well, they can't be I mean, the, the whole building's on fire. The authorities are going to see it. So, okay, I mean, it's not, it, well. not a secret that's happened. For the record, I would just like to say that my initial suggestion of putting them in a warm room and letting them melt into a puddle would have been a better option because if they turn out to be people, they'll just be a little cranky and they won't actually be puddles. He took the Prescott routine. Yeah, well, Prescott. Which was a bit of a... Yeah. If you listen to his well, stories, maybe. there's a lot of violence in them. You know? well, Comas really. and, and death, violent death, really a lot of time. That, well, yeah, that is true, but... Well, I mean, if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing the whole way, yeah, so... You don't want to do the half measures. Mm -hmm. That's I have a tattoo of that, too. Where? You know. Oh, uh, yeah. Anyways, well, um... I hope, uh... Yeah, I mean, I mean the legal troubles, that's, um... Chip, you know what? They were only Democrats, though. <laughs> yeah, I guess they were. I mean, you can always say, the half is half empty. It's, it could be worse. It could have been a bunch of... You want to play the glass half full game again? Republicans. That would be a worst case scenario. I could buy 20 bunches of bananas at $15. But you know what? Fish on. Fish Pe on. People are people. And loss of life is always a tragedy. Yeah, I suppose so. Depending on what their outlook on politics is. That's true. That's not true. Chip, I'm a terrible... I need to... What's happened to Earl Prescott? He's you know what it is? It's the stress of the money. It's the stress. Yeah, Earl's pressure. gone really dark these days. It's the pressure. Um, it's the stress of the money. I mean, sometimes I could fly off the handle. I can be a little bit of a hothead, and Prescott's sometimes. usually here to, to to cool us down. Cool us down, know? but you know what? Cool it is? us down because we're cold blooded. It's the stress. It's the stress of the money. It's the stress. Well, well, well that's another. You know what they say? Pickerel. A good lawyer can solve anything. I know a couple good lawyers. Well, no, I don't. Did they die? He's not. He's nodding his head. He's saying yes. I really? knew a couple of good lawyers. Well, um, I think that's probably a good place to stop there. Retlaw, we wish you, wish you all the best with the legal situation. I'm sure you know anyone who's a tackle talk viewer and caller. I'm sure the judges will understand. You're probably a wonderful, upstanding person. Yep. If you and need us to be a witness, we'll be there for you. You made an honest mistake. It's an honest mistake. Who hasn't lit a bunch of Democrats Lizards on fire? Lizards are very sneaky, like Democrats. Anyways, maybe you could uh, have a cook, have a barbecue. Yeah, I mean, it, this is my first time lighting Democrats on fire, but it's you know always a problem. The first yeah. time for everything. I usually find the first time's the best time. I've been Chip Hamlin. And this has been Earl Prescott. And this is Tech Talk with Fresh and Earl. So long. So long.